Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to help you create an agent using open source model DeepSeek R1, which will essentially be able to create newsletters like these for us. So this is an HTML file that the agent essentially ends up with. And then we'll be using an HTML viewer to go inside uh, or paste the HTML here to kind of view what's in the content itself. So this is how the output looks like. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building this hands-on using Crew AI. And if you've not watched my previous Crew AI video, this is the best time to do so because you can essentially, you know, build any sorts of automation agents using Crew AI. Now, without further delay, let's jump right in the code so this is the code that you see on the screen right now uh, we're going to be using surfer api key in order to get google search results and then we can either use gpt 4 mini model or we can use olama in order to run the large language models we'll first try with the gpt 4 mini model because that is kind of easier to run now if you have not set up this before this is the first time for you to run these agents i also have this step-by-step -step guide in here which will help you set this up very easily right so the next thing you'll need to do is download python which will be the language in which we'll write this code and once you have both of these installed you can open a new folder or create a new folder inside of vs code by just going into new window and then clicking on open and then creating a new folder in whichever folder you'd like either ways my project setup is here what you need to do next is create a newsletter folder and inside of that create a new file main.py you can create the new folder by clicking this button here and then the file inside of this by clicking the new file here when you start you should see something like this there should be nothing in here but we'll slowly add code in here to kind of make this file more meaningful if you just want to clone my workspace here i also have the link to the github repo in the description so please go ahead and just clone this so that you don't have to go through the process of creating these files and you can also have access to my previous files in here so let's go ahead and start looking at the code obviously i've used ai to write the code because you know it's faster and better to do this but the ideation and the olama deep sea r1 integration is on you one more thing that you will need to download in case you want to run the model with olama is go to olama here and download the olama from in here and once you download olama go to models and then look for deep sea car one and for this example i'm going to be using the simplest and the smallest model which is the 7 billion parameter model uh, which is not the smallest maybe the second smallest copy this command open the terminal or cmd if you're on windows and ensure that Ulama is running you should see something on the top here again all of this has been done in our previous videos so if you don't know uh, please refer those add the command Ulama list which will essentially show you show the list of the models that I have in my computer right now what you need to do is copy this command and you need to paste this here now I am specifically using the 7 billion parameter model so this is how my command looks if you want to use other models your command may change like this right so I'm going to stick to 7 billion parameter model which is the model that i want to use here and you should be running this command or the default command that you get because that will download the default model all right so while the file gets downloaded for you what you can do is go back to your vs code now and in here you will need two more things you will need the surfer api key in order to access google search and you will need openai api key in order to use openai to get your surfer api key go to surfer.dev and api key and in order to get openai api key go to platform.openai.com slash api keys if this is not the first time that you're doing then you probably know what we're doing right once you have both of these your job will be to paste both of these files inside of the .env file here i'm not going to be opening this but you should be naming them surper underscore api underscore underscore key and then equals to the key that you get and same for openai api key now let's look at the code itself we will first try to run this via gpt and then we will try to run it via the olama model so we are going to be importing all the necessary libraries here os.env in order to load our environment files then crew ai crew ai tools in order to use task agent and essentially all the agent based functions we will use langchain openai to use openai model and langchain community llms to use olama and then we have the surfer api key so we are basically getting the key from the backend and creating a search tool which will essentially help us to access the data on google then we also create an llm and there will be two options for us here right so we can use gpt or we can use olama we are going to be using gpt 4 mini in scenarios where we want to go with gpt and you will see there will be a command line prompt that will come when you run this code and the second option will be to you know run return olama and run the deep seek r1 latest model which is the model that we've just cloned you can then create agents where let's say by default gpt will be true if you don't pass any command and you will assign the llm to these agents right so llm is equal to get llm now depending on what model you're using either gpt or olama this will assign the llm and then for each of the agent you can see we are going to 
assign these LLMs to them. Note that we have three agents. First, the research specialist whose job is to go to the internet and find the data for us. The second guy has the job to verify the data that the researcher agent gets so that we only get the legitimate information. And we do this by going into a random website and verifying the data that the researcher agent gives us. And then there is the writer agent who will essentially look at the data that we have and create the blog in the format that we want. We are passing a few more commands here. So role is obvious. Goal is obvious. Backstory is essentially to make the response more realistic. And then we can assign tools to these agents. So both of these, as you can see, have search tool, while the third one does not. You can create your own custom tools in Crew AI and then assign it to a specific agent. In case, let's say you want to publish this on Substack or wherever you post your newsletters, then you can also kind of do that. Uh, then we re uh, return all of these agents. So researcher, fact checker, and writer so that we have access to all three agents. And then we'll create tasks. Now, each of these agents needs to have a task. So the research task will go to the research agent and uh, you can see we are assigning it here and every task needs to have a expected output. Then there is the verify task or the context for this task will come from the research task. So in a way we are connecting both of these tasks and the data that we get from the research task will be validated in purview of, you know, the verify task or the other way around. And then there is the newsletter task, which will be assigned to the agent writer, which is this guy in order to write the newsletter. And then obviously we have the uh, expected output or output for this guy as well. What we then do is we create a crew. So essentially we put together agents tasks in the crew in order to run all of this in tandem. We will put verbose as true. So we know what is going on in the chat. And then we define a main function where our job will be to bring all of this together. So we will have the use GPT function where we will ask the user if they want to use GPT, which we will do for the first time. And then the input for the topic of the newsletter, and then we'll create agent tasks and then execute crew in order to run this. The final command with that we'll need to run would be crew dot kickoff, which will essentially start the whole chain. The agents will kind of talk to each other and try to accomplish the task that you've given to them. So that said, I think the final one is just an exception in case something fails, we know what went wrong, but let's go ahead and press this button. Either you can do this or you can run the file by using Python and then the file location. I think this is an easier option. So let's just run this and you can see the code execution has started and now it's asking if you want to use GPT-4. I'm going to say yes. And then it's asking me topic. We've already seen for deep sea car one. So I'm going to try something else. Op so opening I announced operators earlier today. So I'm going to do operator open AI. All right. So what this will essentially do is it will look up the web for all the news related to the operator open AI agent. Uh, you can see this is, these are some of the articles. This is another article. Essentially, this is using Serper dev in order to get this, these articles and then using open AI in order to summarize these articles. You can see with open AI, it's kind of super fast. Right, but unfortunately, because this is GPT 4 mini model, which is actually very fast, Deep Sea Caron, on the other hand, is a thinking model and it's relatively slow, so it will kind of take time for us to process that. This is almost like an operator agent that OpenAI announced yesterday. Obviously, the operator agent has the ability to kind of see the screen and interact with the items on the screen. This is too early stage for that. But if you see Claude computer use, you can create a similar agent on top of a crew AI in order to do all of this interaction. Either ways, our newsletter is ready in a way. I'm going to copy this command and I'm go to HTML viewer. And then I'm going to be pasting this here. Obviously you can save a file as an HTML and then do this exact same thing, but it's easier to just look at it like this, right? So open AI's operator revisionizing task automation, your new AI assistant for everyday tasks, open AI's unveiled latest operator agent. And you can see this looks actually very, very good. It's almost like a web page that was created in real time based on the new news items that went live yesterday. So imagine like if you could build like a blog flow like this, where you could create a new tool that pushes these blogs to WordPress in real time. You can basically automate all your blog writing by adding more rules and customizations to the output itself. So very, very cool. Let's now try to go back to our code. And this time around, what we'll do is we'll use the uh, deep sea car one model. I don't have high hopes for this model primarily because this is a thinking model and can kind of mess up the response. Plus it might take very, very long time to run locally, but let's go ahead and try it out anyways. Right? So I'm going to say use GPT for no, and then research topic is going to be uh, AGI, right? So let's do that and see what comes out on the output side. It's going to take some time. So I'm just going to pause this until this is done and I'll let you guys know how long it takes. Currently it's one. 27 p.m. 
So let's see how long it kind of takes or if it fails in the between. It's likely that the code might also fail in between, but let's see how long it takes in general. So it does appear that DeepSeek is making progress, but I'll tell you that it's kind of trying to fool us here uh, because if you scroll through the logs here, you will never see that they've accessed the search tool. Rather, you can see that it's kind of used its own knowledge base to craft something in here. So if I had put something on the lines of DeepSeek or something new, it would have failed. Now, this brings us to a very important point with respect to how crew AI works. Essentially what crew AI does is that every time you put a command or something to do, it will essentially tell the LLM to create a task of sorts. Now that task will be, for example, saying access search tool. Now, obviously this will be a programming function that they will call. But in this case, when you're using deep seek, if you look at the output here, it says think and it does some thinking before it responds to you and then gives you the final answer. Crew AI currently will not be able to make a sense of this. So even if it tells the LLM to create a function, it will still have this thinking process, which will essentially lead the crew AI framework or models to think that there was no need to do search at all. Basically, it creates a list of things to do. And then based on the list of things that have been created, each of these tasks is executed. But when you see something like a think that kind of disrupts the flow and you know it does not work for the large language models so that said it's one of the reasons why large language models or open source models are not well optimized for use cases so now if you had to change this and i tried doing a lot of prompt engineering to uh, change the think bit in one of my own ai agent videos yesterday unfortunately it's not changing that it would still respond to you with the think parameters i think at some point someone in the community will kind of fork this and change the process where you don't show the thinking part or maybe crew AI will or Ulama will introduce some command that will allow us to remove the thinking bit. But as of right now, it looks like it will disrupt the flow and uh, frameworks like crew AI and any other framework for that matter will require some optimizations to you know, work with agent flows like this. It's still writing the code. Obviously it will come up with the uh, HTML format that we wanted to, but I am not very confident that uh, it will be a great model for the agents to coordinate and work together. What you can do is use a different large language model for writer and use different ones for researcher that can work, right? Because you're passing LLM as a parameter. So if you want to do research and orchestrate tasks, then use these two models. But if you want to generate something which like for example writing a piece of blog post then you don't need access to these expensive models and you can just use the open source model so that would be the way to kind of bypass this but at this point of time i think i'm not going to be getting into all of those optimizations this kind of gives you a great framework to build something on the lines of a newsletter automation agent if especially you're comfortable using gpt4 or mini if you want to use deep sea caro and you will have to do some optimizations and play around but i think that this gives you a good starting point Point. That said, this is going to be all for the video guys. Thank you so much. It's still kind of generating the output, which is unfortunate, but thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one.